All right, so we're back. This is going to be test six of the extra practice uh, math sections I've been doing. Uh, the link to where I'm getting this is going to be right here. Remember, remember the HubSpot links one through ten. I've done seven through ten already. This is number six, and I will uh, begin uploading some reading problems soon. So I see number twelve here, and there's a few things I want to think. I, I feel like a lot of the time I see this problem it's going to be something I can cancel out when I factor. So step one, always get your greatest common factor on top and on the bottom. On top, it looks like it's going to be 2x, right? The biggest number I can pull from 4 and 6 is going to be 2. The biggest x I can pull is x. On the bottom, the biggest I can pull is 2. So unfortunately, we're not going to get some big uh, factoring cancellation. What I was looking for is, say I'm left with... Um, you know, like X minus two up top, X minus two on the bottom, and they cancel out because I took out some greatest common factors. This looks like it's not going to be like that. And if I glance at my answers too, um, maybe you're familiar with it, maybe not. This looks like it's going to be a uh, quadratic long division. And what that looks like is normal long division. We'll set it up just like normal where I throw my numerator in here. 4X squared plus 6X. And then I throw my denominator out here. And same as always, I start with what is something that's going to cancel out my biggest term here, right? So I already have four. So technically I could multiply by one and get four, but I'm missing an X, right? If I multiply this by X, and remember always do it, you know, vertical above your other X terms to keep it organized. If I multiply this by X, and parentheses to distribute, I should get 4x squared plus 2x, right? And then also don't forget to distribute your negative when you subtract, and we should get those cancel out, and I should get 4x here, because 6x minus 2x. And then we try it again. Uh, what's going to get me to 4x? It looks like it's going to be plus 1 over here times 1, and I get 4x minus, or rather for now, plus 2. But when we do our uh, subtraction, and I do my parentheses, it looks like I'm going to have a remainder of negative 2 here. Uh, I feel like I was done once I did uh, this 1 here, because I'm always checking my answers. So with the x, uh, once I know x goes through, I look at a, b, c, and d. They all have x, so that didn't help me at all, right? But when I look at one, once I know that one goes through with no remainder, um, none of them have one except D. So I knew it was D once the one went through, but I just wanted to get that negative two to, to ensure that I had the right answer, right? Your negative two is a remainder, throw it back over the denominator. But not too bad. Uh, this again, this is a, a more niche problem. You won't see this too much, uh, but just uh, quadratics, uh, long division. And let's see what we got next. So down below, let me get rid of some of this. Uh, number 13, this one, I'm, I'm already getting an inclination, but let me just make sure. Oh, it has no real solutions. Okay, so so again, it still looks like a, like a function. I wanna throw this in Desmos, but I'm probably gonna have to be pretty uh, explicit with what I look for here. So I'm gonna throw up Desmos. Let's throw it on the other side here. All right. Let's type this function in 2x to the second minus 4x equals t equals equals a. I can't do a slider here. What about uh, minus a? There we go. So all I did was I subtracted the t to the other side. So actually, let me just make it a t for, for to make it easier. So all I did was minus t from both sides and minus t. So it's, uh, you know, 2x. Let me scroll that down. So it's going to be 2x squared minus 4x minus t equals 0. So not too bad. Just a little bit of algebra because Desmos was being odd there. Uh, but I have my function. <clears throat> and let me scroll up on Desmos here. So, okay, so I have my parabola, but what do they mean here when they say uh, no solutions? If the equation has no real solutions. So let's look at our graph again. So this is one that is going to be systematic. We are going to see very many versions of this. 
you're going to see two real solutions, which remember solutions on a parabola are going to be when we cross the x-axis. So as it is right now, we would have two real solutions. Uh, these would be my two x values, my two x intercepts. Sometimes you'll see when it's uh, one real solution, and that's going to be when t equals negative two. One real solution is when our vertex hits the x-axis, because we're technically only hitting at one point, right? No real solutions is going to be when we're above the x-axis when it's positive. Because do you see how there's no intersections, intersection points with my x-axis? So I just glance at my t-slider. Three positive is going to give me two solutions. Oh, and I'm also looking at my answers here. So let me try to uh, zoom up here. Okay, there you go. So as you can see, when I I'm testing three for d, and I get two real solutions here, right here and right here. I test closer to one and I'm still getting two real solutions here. I'm going to test that negative one and we still have two real solutions. And then obviously I'm going to test negative three. We're going to go above the X axis. There's going to be no real solutions here. So this one, not too bad. Uh, throat and Desmos just match what they're asking. Uh, they're either going to ask for one real solution, which you get your vertex on the x-axis, or they ask for no real solutions, get it above the x-axis, or if it's a negative, down below the x-axis. So let's hide Desmos and jump down to number four here. Number four. Ooh. So there's a lot going on. Um, already I can, I can kind of see from the answers that this is going to be uh, like two linear equations. Sometimes we have to derive them. Sometimes they're context-based. Big paragraph, this is going to be context-based. So let's try to form our own equations <clears throat> and see if they match up with one of our answers. So we have detergent and fabric softener. So it looks like they use D for detergent and then S for the fabric softener. The supplier will deliver no more than 300 pounds. So I already know it's less than or equal to 300, but that has that's in all my answers. So that doesn't help. Let's use a different color here. Each container of detergent weighs 7.35, so 7.35, uh, and that weighs 6.2. Does that help at all? All four, oh yeah, right here. Uh, that gives 14.7 to detergent, and this gives 14.7 to detergent. So I don't really see how that would work, right? And then I look at the rest of the information. <clears throat> this is a big one. This is going to be really good practice, not just for this problem, but for future problems. They say they want to buy at least twice as many containers of detergent as fabric softeners. So to not get confused when making this equation, let's put a two for detergent and one for fabric softener. At least twice as many of detergent as fabric softener. But how do we make that equation? Because I'm looking at this part now, right? They're directly comparing the two. <clears throat> so to compare these two, I start with detergent equals softener, right? One of them is going to get a two and one of them is going to get a one. Remember, I want to be able to plug in one for my, I want to be able to get twice as many detergents as fabric softeners, right? So if I plug in one for S, I should get two for D. So if I put the two here, well, that doesn't make sense because if I plug in one and two, I'm going to get four equals one. So what if I put the two on the other side and just tested the same thing, right? I'll put a two here. If I plug in one for S, I will get two detergents. So this equation's always, um, you know, a little ironic because we want to associate the two with detergent, but it's the opposite. We want the two on the other side of detergent so it multiplies by two and gives back to detergent. So we're going to be looking at, it looks like A for number 14 here, because we want the two with softener. The easiest way to reason this, throw one in for softener, you get two for D. You want twice as many detergent. So again, not, not too bad there, I don't think. And then we're going to go up to 18. If you just watched my last part, this problem is going to look pretty familiar to you. It is a different problem, but on the SAT, you're going to get many 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 repeated concepts so that's the whole point of practice right if we master the concepts then they can't surprise us so let's look at what we have here 
I see uh, the part, this partition triangle. Again, if you watch last vid, we want to break it up into three triangles. I go small triangle over here, which they already have labeled, which is great. Eight, six, before I even go any further, I already know CD, don't I? Three, four, five triangle, three, four, five, but they multiplied it by two. So this guy's going to be 10 here. So always looking out for those special triangles. And then I draw my bigger triangle. It's going to be a little hard to squeeze in over here. Let me see if I can get a little bit more space. Okay, right there. So bigger triangle here. Uh, this is just going to be straight from C to E to A. So I have 18 so far. Okay. Let's see what other information they give me, they give me here. BD is parallel to AE, always. Uh, what is the length of CE? So this one's actually not too bad. I think the last one we had to solve for using tangent. Uh, this one, we have a direct relationship. 6 to 18. So I'm using the partition triangle, but let's use the big and small triangle. I have a ratio here, don't I? To go from 6 to 18, these triangles are going to be similar because they have the same angles. I need to multiply by 3. So if I'm going from 6 to 18 for my right side, my hypotenuse I have as well. I would go from 10 to 30, right? And then since I know this is going to be another 3, 4, 5 triangle, if this divided by 3 is going to be 6, 10, and then uh, this I would be 8. So I want to multi multiply that by 3. I should be able to get a 24 here. So again, all I did is I'm just comparing sides. I'm using my 3, 4, 5 triangle. Um, if I have an 18, if I have a 30, remember five di or a 30 divided by 6 is 5. 18 divided by 6 is 3. 24 divided by 6 is 4. So this is just a classic 3, 4, 5 triangle. What is the length of CE? And it looks like I already solved for it. I got 30 there. But we like to fill out the whole triangle just in case they ask for CA as well. So this one, I think a little bit easier than the last one. The last one we had a tan to deal with. But still, draw your three triangles. Always make ratios between the smaller triangle and the bigger triangle. What are they multiplying by? Do I have a 3, 4, 5, et cetera? And the next one here, I think there's two more. This is a really good problem. Uh, it's, it's always really trippy the first time, but let's try to organize it the best we can, right? <clears throat> How many liters of a 25% saline solution? So right there, I should already be able to form an equation. How many liters? I don't know. So what if I do uh, 0.25 X and X could represent the liters that I need, right? So we have that must be added, they're telling me the equation, must be added to three liters of 10%. And look, I'm just going to match the format. I put my 10%. I put my uh, three in here. And uh, to obtain a 15% solution. So this is the tricky part. Obtain equals, right? But what do I put on this other side? I'm cool with 0.15. But how many liters am I going to get here? Is it three? Is it X? On the left side, we have a total of three liters and X liters. So if I'm mixing these two together by adding them, I should get X plus three total liters. So this is a, a really good equation. If you can figure this one out, it's going to help you so much. One of the harder to derive equations um, to solve, it's super easy. You could throw this in Desmos. I'll just multiply everything by 100 real quick. So it looks like uh, 25x plus uh, 30. No, I'll still write the uh, the 3 in there. So times 3 equals 15 times x plus 3, right? And to solve for this, we just want to combine like terms. This is going to be 15x plus 45. Uh, this is going to be plus 30 here. I could subtract the 15 to the, other, to the other side. I should get 10x. Subtract the 30 to the other side, and I should get uh, 15. And x should equal 1.5. Let me just make sure that's right. Yeah. So not too bad. The whole difficulty of this problem is deriving that first equation. Then you can just throw it in decimals. Uh, but does it make sense, right? As long as I stay organized, I have my percentages. I have my liters adding because uh, it must be added to three liters of this 
how many total liters do I have? X plus three. Great problem to review there. And the final one on this page, another good refresher here. Let's check this one out. Uh, points A and B lie on a circle. So I'm already gonna draw my circle here. And I draw A and B, it doesn't matter. I'll maybe say like A, B. And I see arc AB, so I'll just highlight this. And what do they wanna know about this? They say radius one, so that's important. I could just draw these two just in case, one and one. <clears throat> it has length pi over three. Okay. And what do they wanna know about this? Uh, what is the, what fraction of the circumference of the circle is the length of arc AB? So this one is just going to be kind of remembering uh, what type of circle has a, or not even what type of circle, if we just know our radius is one, right? Can't we get our total circumference? So uh, they do have this on the reference sheet. So just make sure to familiarize yourself with the reference sheet. It should be on your blue book. Um, circumference is going to be uh, two pi r. So if they give us our r, this is just gonna be equal to two pi, right? My total circumference. So if this arc is uh, pi over three and they want what fraction of the circumference, well, can I just do pi over three uh, divided by uh, two pi, right? And if I just get equal denominators real quick, multiply this by three, I should be able to cancel those out and it looks like pi over six pi or one over six. So the division part I, I think is not too bad. It's just uh, making sure we, we ensure we know how to use all of our equations, right? All of our functions. I draw my circle. I know that if they want this fraction, I need my total and the part they, they gave us. The pi over three is the part they gave us. Uh, two pi is gonna be my total. Divide the two and I should get one sixth here. So again, not too bad. Uh, this is page one. I'm gonna be jumping onto page two and page three later today. Make sure to check that out.